without of them, okay? They have a seared soul. They will murder you, take you out, destroy you, just as soon as do anything else, okay? It's an important thing to recognize because many times we think that those people don't exist. Those people do exist, okay? And, which is one of the reasons to keep firearms. <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in there. So, um, let me see, where are we at? Do, 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 okay. The people, the 50Ks, Elijah is here. Kind of lost my spot there. Okay, we're down on verse 20. So he goes to, he, he goes to Mount Carmel. And, and remember, Ahab's here too. Um, obviously Jezebel's not. Verse 21, Elijah went before the people and he's making this appeal to them. And the appeal is because they truly don't know. Okay? And, and how do you know that? Because of the outcome. Okay? God's there to save them. He knows that they're confused. He knows that they're blinded. He knows that they have been overwhelmed with this evil. Um, and he, 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 he's doing this for them. Verse 22, Elijah said to them, I am, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. Okay? That's not true, right? We know we have a hundred of them in the caves. But he's the only one there who is brave enough to do exactly what God has asked him to do. And God has empowered him to do just exactly that. <clears throat> but Baal has 450. Okay, and his point here is that when you look at who's there, there's 850 of the prophets of Baal and Asherah. And he's the only one over there at the two, at the two altars. Okay, and then he, he says, when he says, get two bulls, this is verse 23, get two bulls, uh, bulls for us, um, and let them choose one for themselves, and let them cut it up into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. And I will prepare the other bull and put, and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. <clears throat> then you call in the name of your God, and I will call in the name of the Lord, and the God who answers by fire, he is God. Okay, so this is a contest, okay? This is a contest between the two. And what's interesting about it, the contest is such that it's going to be very overt in its understanding. And this is exactly what the, what the uh, Israelites in the northern kingdom need at this point. Now we do know that ultimately, um, about 100 and, it's about 850, so it's about 125 years later, these people get completely wiped out. Their children's children do, okay? Um, because they get wiped out by the Assyrians because they keep going back to Baal and to calves and to and other things like that. And we know that because, remember, we, this is the part we, we, we talked about last week with uh, uh, Jeroboam, um, the, the, uh, the, the one from Ephraim. Then all people said, what you say is good. See, they're, 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 they're confused. They legitimately want to, to be able to see this. Um, so would I. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, uh, choose one of the bulls, prepare it uh, first, uh, since there are so many of you. Uh, call on the name of the Lord and do not light the fire. So they took a bull and, and they and, uh, given to them and they prepared it. So they cut it all up and did all that stuff. <clears throat> and then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, oh Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No, uh, no one answered. And they danced around the altar as, that they had made. Okay, so that's, that's their ritual. And um, you know, the, the best example of this, I'm trying to remember that movie. That movie. It's a movie that kind of shows something where there's all this weird worshiping going on. It's, um, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll remember it later. Uh, verse 27. Uh, at noontime, so this has been four hours, okay. Um, at noontime, Elijah uh, begins to taunt them. Shout louder, uh, he said. Surely he is God, perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or traveling, or maybe he's sleeping, and must be awakened. Now note there, one of the things I want to know about this, is note that he taunts them. Note sarcasm, okay? He's extremely sarcastic, okay? Note that sarcasm sometimes has a very important role in teaching the Word of God. Uh, Paul does that, and Jesus does it, but somehow... People have this weird understanding that you're not allowed to be sarcastic, okay? Sometimes sarcasm is the best way to teach because people need to be jarred. They almost need to be pushed a little bit because they don't listen. Um, 
So they shouted louder and started slashing themselves with swords and spears. This is very common too. Um, if, if, you, if you've seen recently, one of the things back about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, young people were cutting themselves. That's the same thing. And um, this, this is part of that worship. It shows up in every one of these, every one in, in demonic things, slashing shows up in their ritual as a part of their appeal to God and taking their blood. Um, he says, um, and that was as was their custom. So that's establishing that point. Until their blood flowed, meaning that it flowed along with, the, with everything else. So there's like 800 of them. 850, they're all cutting, so there's blood's going everywhere. And that's their appeal to the demons. <clears throat> okay? So they shouted loud and louder, slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday had passed, and, um, and they continued their frantic prophesying. So now, they're, now their ritual is getting frantic. The more it is, the more frantic. They're getting into a tizzy, essentially, here, until the time of the evening sacrifice. Now, the evening sacrifice is a reference to the law of the Levitical offerings in Deuteronomy, and it means at twilight. So here's like the end of the day. They've been doing this all day long, okay? And uh, still no answer. And it says here, but there was still no response, no one answered, no one paid attention. Okay? Um, the, the, the also, the, the speaking in the prophesying is, is kind of like speaking in tongues. Um, it's, it's a, it's a uh, what do you call it? It's a, uh, an imitation. So in verse 30 it says, Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. And they came to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been in ruins. Now we find out what had happened is that the worshippers of Baal had come and torn his altar down, had torn the altar of God down. So they didn't have an altar of God, okay? They torn it all down, and, and, and so what Elijah's doing, he says, So he took twelve stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, meaning they had been given to them, okay? Saying, um, Your name shall be Israel, and that's quoting, the, the, that's quoting God. When, when he made them into a nation, he made Jacob's name into Israel, if you remember. Uh, verse 32, With the stones he had built uh, an altar uh, in the name of the Lord, and he dug trenches around it, large enough to hold two sets of seed. Okay, that's part of the offering. And that's like 15, 15 liters, 13 quarts. Um, he arranged the wood around the bowl into pieces and laid it on the wood. And then he said, said to them, fill four large jars of water and pour it over the offering uh, on, on the wood. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to not only soak the offering, but he's trying to soak the wood. This is going to make it much, much harder, right? And then in 14 he says, verse 34 he says, do it again, a second town. Now remember this is a drought, so I think it's kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek um, joke. So they pour more water over it, and they said do it again. They did it a third time. Uh, he ordered, he ordered, they did it the third time, the water ran down into the altar, it even filled the trench. So now there's water everywhere around the altar uh, and, and, the, uh, and the wood, and it's sopping wet. Verse 36, at the time of the sacrifice, <clears throat> this is the evening sacrifice, so notice he times this, both God and him. They had a sacrifice in the Levitical offerings that was one in the morning and one in the evening. This is the one in the evening, this is the evening sacrifice. So it's timed, even by God, to be perfectly um, in tune with the schedule of the evening sacrifice that would have normally happened in, in the temple. Okay. Um, Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord, God of, Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Notice, note he changes, he changes his name from, Israel, from Jacob to Israel because Israel is the name that God gave him when he chose him. Okay. When, when Jacob became a believer, he, God changed his name to Israel, okay, which means prince. Um, let me see where I did I'm Israel. Do, 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 I trenched it. I lost my way. Keep my finger down there. Um, where is this? 30? Sorry. I'm trying to find my spot. Oh, here it is right here. Sorry. It's 36. Um, let it be known today that you are the God of Israel. That's the challenge. And that I am your servant. See, he's getting, his, he's getting a certification that Elijah, a part of this, he's not only proving that he is the God of Israel, that, that Jehovah, that the Lord is, is the God of Israel, 
to them, but he's also connecting himself with God, okay? Meaning that if, if it doesn't happen, he's going to get killed, right? But if it does happen, he now becomes identified with the miracle that God chose him, okay? So that's what he's saying, that I, that I am the, the prophet of God. And he does that so it gives him the ability to lead the people afterwards and to be identified, very similar to what happened with Paul and the apostles, very, very similar. Uh, and that I have done these things at your command. See, that he's telling me that God is one who had me do this. Uh, 37, answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that these people will know, O Lord, that, O Lord, our God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Now see, this is the part that's really great about God. This is the part where it says, won't the shepherd go out and find the sheep and go, when they're lost and they're astray and they're in danger? Won't he go get them? And he does, yeah. That's the, when, when he talks about the 99 sheep and the one, that's, that's not a salvation verse. That is a restoration verse of an unbeliever who has wandered off. And God does this for them over and over and over again for the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, letting us know that God will, that God will come and get us. He, he will come and get us and he will entreaty us continually to come back to him. Okay? Uh, verse 38. Uh, then the fire of the Lord fell um, and burnt up the sacrifice from heaven. Um, the wood, the stones, even the stones got, got melted, got evaporated. The soil and licked up all the water in the trenches. Did everything. He didn't just take the sacrifice. This is an exclamation point on God's work. Okay, He says, um, when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Exclamation point. They're screaming it out. They're screaming out their repentance. Which is what God needs from them to restore their land. Okay? Um, Verse 40, Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets of Baal. Uh, do, not let, not, do not let any of them get away. And he's talking about all 850. Okay? They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley, that's the valley I was showing you, and slaughtered them. With the sword, he just killed every single one of them. 850 of them. So I think today we wouldn't be, uh, we're not in that condition, but you can see how God deals with that. There's no remorse whatsoever. Elijah doesn't blink an eye. In reality, when God tells you to do something that is of that caliber, especially where they're at, this is how they dealt with false prophets, especially all of these false prophets that had led astray all the northern kingdom. They got exactly what they deserved. Okay? Verse 41, Elijah said to Ahab, go and eat and drink uh, he's there, so Elijah's addressing Ahab, who's, who watched this whole thing. He's freaked out, Ahab is. Um, but it says, Go and eat and drink, uh, for there is the sound of heavy rain. And Ab Ahab went off and ate and drank. But Elijah climbed to the top of, um, of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground. He put his face between, uh, between his knees. Go down and look at the sea, he told his, his servant. His servant's name is Nar, but he's a young man. Shows up in, in chapter 17, 23, verse 23. And he keeps telling him, he says, go down and look. Go down and look towards the sea. Go down and look towards the sea. See what you see. Okay? Uh, there is nothing there, he said. Seven times, note the number, seven times he, Elijah says, go back. Go back, go back, and go look. And he's looking towards the Mediterranean, so you remember how I showed it. He's looking out that way. <clears throat> and he says, at the seventh time, the servant said, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. He just sees this little tiny thing. Now, no, no, Elijah's response to this. Okay, this is this is great stuff. He says, so Elijah says, go and tell Ahab to hitch your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. So he's saying there's going to be so much rain that even in your chariot, it's going to wipe you out. It's going to rain that hard. Okay. In the meanwhile, the sky grew black and the clouds and the wind rose. And the heavy rain came on, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. This is where his palace was at. And the power of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he tucked his cloak into his belt, and he ran ahead of him. Remember, he's running, Elijah's running, and Ahab's in the chariot. And he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel, which is probably, looks like it's about 10 miles. So it's quite the, uh, quite the trip, especially through the mountains. 
Um, so uh, that, that's the lesson, but I, I think what I really wanted to, to look at from that is to, one, look who Elijah is. So if we had to identify uh, who's who, in fact, let's put, let's put even, um, we're going to put Obadiah in here. Okay, so I hope you can see red. Can you see red? If I write on the board. Elijah is obviously in gold territory, right? And the worst king, Ahab, and Ahab's a believer. We, we see that through the scripture. He is clay. We take the analogy we talked about last week. The Israelites, they're in the wood territory, moving towards clay. Why do we know that? Because they are indifferent, they can't tell the difference, right? We know indifference means wood, okay? This is antagonistic, this is wood. See the antagonism? Okay? We're going to leave Je Jezebel off for just a second. But we have here what would appear to be silver, or something in that territory. He is faithful to the Lord, he's done what the Lord has asked him to, he's done with it since he's a child. So you see the same stuff coming up in here, and you see their very actions. Now, what makes, I think, um, Elijah into the gold territory is that he absolutely obeys God. Even though there's lots of other prophets around, he kind of shows up on the scene three years earlier when he does this introduction to Ahab on the, on the, uh, on the drought. And, and, he, and, he, and he stays fast. Even though his life is threatened, he doesn't even blink an eye, does he? He's actually dictating to Ahab what he's going to do. And you can see that even though that Obadiah has done these righteous things before the Lord and protected people, he, he's afraid to die. He's afraid of the king. He, does, he, he is not willing to take that step without assurances from Elijah that he's going to take care of it. Okay? So I think um, that's really what I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at the whole thing. The thing that bothers me the most is this piece in right here. Uh, and we'll find out from Jezebel. Um, Je Jezebel is a, I think the word I wrote down, she's a byword for evil. She's a byword for seduction. She, she, sex is nothing to her. She is perfectly willing to do anything for evil that it takes. And, and, and we know also that the other thing that Ahab, even though Ahab was a believer, um, in reality, he yields completely to Jezebel, even to the point of establishing evil worship in, in, in his kingdom and encourages people and allows her to murder the prophets of God. So, again, we see that the greatest vulnerability that, many, that men have is to being very careful who they, who they marry, who they have relationships with, because that is hugely vulnerable when you have a woman who knows how to use all those skills. And uh, if you know about it later, she even tries to do that with uh, uh, Jehu before uh, he has her thrown off and she dies, which is the prophecy. Uh, the prophecy that Elijah gives her but, um, but actually takes place. So, on that, um, let's close in prayer. Dearest, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love for us, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the, the stories that you put in the Scriptures so that we can pull principles out and to identify them. To identify who's who. Even, even in the Old Testament, Lord, you called people to be yours. You gave them great opportunities. You never failed them. You always supplied everything that was needed. That's the God that we know too. So Lord, that you are, you are today as you were yesterday, forever and ever. You are the provider of all great things for those who, who are faithful to you. I pray, Lord, that we remember these things when we have things happen to us, when we become afraid just from the craziness that's going on in the world, knowing that you are our protector and nobody is better or stronger than you. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. So. You wanna... I can't see anybody or hear anybody. Oh, so. you can't see anybody? Oh, I can only see the... the... Oh. oh. Right here. Right here. Oh. I'm, I'm... So you can... Uh, oh, I forget where the camera's at. I'm looking over there. So...
There you are. I'm on both of them. I have an echo. There we go. Hello, 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 hello. So I have a question. No. You want Is there an me? echo? Yeah, he has me. Oh, I have to mute myself. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, yeah, because I can talk here. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. There I am. Hey, I'm looking at two different places at the same time. <laughs> so, um, uh, I might have missed this. Is Jezebel and Ahab saved? No. Uh, Ahab is saved. Jezebel is not. Jezebel is, is demonic. She is the one who is... She is a... Uh, you would call him a Canaanite, but she, of, of the Canaanite area, she is a Phoenician, which is actually Greek, is interesting enough. The Greek sea people that came over in the, in the Dory invasion we were talking about the other day <laughs> and populated that area. But they, they were very demonic, and she is, she is, the, uh, she, she, she is the, um, the kingdom that's over there in Phoenicia. It's, it's called Sidon. She, uh, she is the, the princess of the king. When when he marries Ahab, okay. So, in reality, is that he tries to unite that he shouldn't have united. He shouldn't have married her. She was obviously very beautiful, very had really great charms and stuff, because she uses them over and over again. But no, she is uh, she is right from the devil. <laughs> but interesting enough about this one, this actually helps us understand. Do you remember when we were studying in chapter three? I think it was Revelation when there was a Christian who was leading her, um, some of the people in her congregation into uh, sexual practices. And what did he call her? The Lord called her Jezebel. Jezebel. Yeah, called her Jezebel. And because of that very reason, because she had that same, she was like her. And, and like you said, today, even in, even in our society, uh, there are no Jezebels. <laughs> Nobody names their kid the daughter Jezebel. And it, it is a byword for being a floozy. You know, for being somebody who has no no uh, morals, which is kind of nice, kind of interesting. Well, uh, when you say she was okay. more like a psychopath, had no empathy, because she could do things to manip manipulate people to get what she wanted, but on uh, obviously she had her husband in the palm of her hand. Yeah. yeah. And and he wasn't such a great guy, so. But he was saved, yet he can't convince her of anything. She turns it around and she controls him, which is what psychopaths usually do today. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that uh, we have a lot of people that walk around like that uh, and we call that a mental disorder. But then again, I'm not always that sure that it's... Uh, diagnosable that way. Yeah, it's yeah. not a disease. They're just, They're just demonic. demonic. <laughs> and I think that that's think who that she that's is. They're just evil. Yeah. Yeah, there's no empathy, no, no, yeah. 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 You're used, they use you, and you don't even know who they are at first. And then over time, you do something wrong, and then you find that they turn on you, it's because they don't need you anymore in their life. And that is... It kind of, it's like a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. I imagine, yeah. I imagine yeah. what happens yeah. is that, that as evil as affects evil you, it, it does it, it make does psychopaths. Make psychopaths. You know, yeah. it actually yeah. even That's makes, right. so um, was, it actually even makes believers I was psychotic. psychotic. Yeah. Well, I, her upbringing had a lot to do with mm -hmm. her thinking. So, so learned behavior took over instead of her being independent of that. Yeah. yeah, and what happens here, yeah. she, she has the ability to turn somebody to absolute evil, and now he can't tell the difference. He is totally under her control. He, he, she, has, she has completely influenced his soul. Right. Which I, which I think is the... Yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the dangers of having people in your periphery, even as friends that you have to be very careful who you have in your life. Yeah. Because even people who are in the wood side will most likely move the silver side person their direction unless they 
Cut it off. Cut it off. Brother yeah. Richard. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, the situation in Ahab is that be parallel to last Sunday study that majority when when you said majority on the Christian believer they don't know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit God's system when you said God's system they don't know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit work with the Holy Spirit yeah and yeah. then quench the Spirit and uh, grieve the Holy Spirit is that yeah, that's exactly the path he took. You know, okay. that's exactly the path he took. And so did they. The Israelites did too. The Israelites oh, yeah, were moving in that direction. And you know, the oh, yeah. difference yeah. between us and them is that we're more like Elijah, although Elijah's gift of the Holy Spirit was temporary. Ours is permanent. So what you really do is that in, in our society, in our world, in the age of the church, we have all these Christians who have no power to protect themselves. They don't, they don't live by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the, 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 you know, the conversation on dispensationalism last week was so important, uh, on Sunday, was so important is because if you're, not in that, if you're not in that power system of God's, you're almost defenseless against a power like Jezebel, or against demons, or against Satan. They have a lot of power over you. And the reality is that you, you, you don't have that. When you, there's a piece in, in, in Romans 8 where it talks about that the only thing that protects your soul is that when you're in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit controls your soul. He controls it and protects it. The only thing that takes you out of that is, is negative volition. You can walk out of it. So what happens with that is that if, what, to be protected against this, you have to walk in the Holy Spirit. The greatest power system of all history is, is the power of the Holy Spirit, the filling of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, the, the Christians are making themselves defenseless. And not only that, they also, it makes it so they can't understand the, the things of God. You know, the, 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 the scriptures and the principles of the scriptures are only understood via the Holy Spirit. He's the true teacher of the Word of God. He's the one who talks to our spirit and, and, and helps us to understand. So you can see, you know, how, how this guy just moved by that persuasion of his soul, by the mentality of his soul. And, and this is very similar, I think, in my mind. It's not that different from Solomon. Solomon did the same thing. He just did it with many. In reality, he went from a kingdom that had only God and only the temple and only people who believed that to being a kingdom with now for decades that these were all set up throughout the entire kingdom uh, of God, all of Israel, all 12 tribes. You know, he was kind of the initiator, which is why God took it away from him. So, it, 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 to me, the, the, it, it all has that same look to it. It all has that same you know, um, vulnerability to, to making choices. You know, when you have somebody that is a bad influence and evil, this is why I said, you know, a bad company corrupts good character. I think it's 1 Corinthians 13, 15, 13 something. But that's very, very true is that you, you, you many people do not think of how important it is to be careful about who, who you, who influences you, who gets that part of your soul. Mrs. Fenimore. So, could you also equate Jezebel to the world, having the same influence? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Well, even more powerful than the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, the, the problem with her, she's not just the world, but he married the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, if the world's out there, I can ignore them and, and, and maybe yeah, even see them. but would it be them. the same as like, just like, a, I mean, you're, it's kind of like marrying the world. If you, yeah, if you marry somebody like Jezebel, it is. It, it, what it means is that, essentially, it, and we've talked about it before, is that when you when you bond, <laughs> when you sexually bond with uh, somebody of the opposite sex, there's a part of your soul that bonds with them, and and and, and that's what. Remember when Paul gives the warning about the prostitute? He says, "Don't you understand? You're uniting your your very soul with a prostitute." His warning is that there's no place for that, and so what he's doing is that he is he is 
he is essentially making himself defenseless. Because every time that she uses her charms, he is mis misled because his mentality tells him something that's not true. And then he bonds with her, and the more he bonds with her in that marriage, the more powerful uh, her influence is over him. So, it, which is the exact reason that you, you see you know, the scriptures about believers and unbelievers not marrying, and the danger of this. And this is, this is the same danger that you have with close friends. Close friends. That, that if, you're, if, you're, if people that you hang out with are in the wood category, are not believers, you're going to migrate that way. It's, it's going to influence you. So that's why God, that's why God, you know, God, continually, God continually talks, talks about, about that. that. It's okay if the world's out there. It's, it's, it's not good when the world's here, when they're in the right inside your head, you know. Oh, I would like to say something. Because uh, there's a lot of uh, people that are married to non-believers. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, what could happen could be a blessing by association. Yeah. And, and yeah. you can be too. in that... Right. So it's not always you're the Jezebel or that person's a Jezebel uh, as that uh, metaphor, but that sometimes you're you're in that situation and probably uh, you were put there because you're strong, but also if you have the spirit and you rebound a lot and you confess. Uh, daily and you study daily that's an influence on the other person and so by association there is a hope that that uh, might happen is Absolutely. That true? Absolutely. yeah and that actually and shows that actually up in the book shows of, Corinthians, of Corinthians, Corinthians where it says, where it says that sometimes when somebody marries somebody, somebody that, that they, they they're two they unbelievers two and one becomes one saved, becomes saved. Or sometimes, or sometimes when that, when, you know, something happens something like, happens that. like that. And what it and says, what it says, it says, it says, it says, it says something like, something and who can, tell, who can tell, that tell that the influence of the believer, of the believer if, and it talks about her wife specifically, specifically, if she is a faithful, faithful wife, wife to the Lord, the Lord that she may she win over her husband. her husband. So, so that's a good possibility. possibility. But the wife but still the has wife to still always be vigilant on that influence. The believer always has to be vigilant of the influence of the other. Yeah, you have to, and you have to uh, learn how to handle that um, yeah. Yeah. spiritually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a being uh, an extra maturing extra factor, factor added, added to your added life. To your life. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's you okay. know, yeah. I, think, I think you know God doesn't, yeah, God waste, doesn't anything. waste anything. What I find what is, I find is, is uh, uh, that yeah, you, the experiences that God puts you in, He puts you in them to succeed. He doesn't put you in the fail. fail. He puts you in the making you stronger. stronger. Yeah. It's just a matter of looking at them and understanding what they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful well, seeing you, ladies. Me too. Thank you. Yeah. 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 One one is almost three thousand miles away, and one is less than three. Three. I know. Okay. Well, okay. Well, love seeing you love guys. Seeing you Have, guys. A nice Have a nice night. Thank you. Okay. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye, bye bye. Bye. Very good. Turn that off.